So, hello. I have changed the dropout system on my 2008 Gambler frame and for this I took off the disc brake and now I'm going to use this possibility to do a little tutorial on how to install and adjust your disc brake. It's very easy. First, you need the right adapter. I'm using an Elevit Code disc brake and therefore you should use the proper adapter and be sure that the adapter is the right size for your disc. 203 millimeter disc means you need for the, uh, you need for the code a 60 millimeter IS adapter. This is the first step. You will install the adapter. Take the adapter, place it here, screw it on. You do this with an Allen wrench. First hand tight, and then you let follow without the screw. The screws are coated with a special substance like Loctite or something else which prevents them from coming loose by the vibrations which occur during cycling. This is important. Then you want to make sure that the adapter is mounted the proper way. This is easy. You just have to check. And yeah, it seems to fit. The adapter is on the wrong is not on the wrong side. The adapter is mounted correctly. Then you tighten the screws with the iron wrench or better with the top wrench, but I don't have any. So I just do it out of my feeling. Tight it, but not too much, otherwise you rip out the screws head. So this is enough. This is a base plate for the, uh, for the brake. Now you have a post mount out of an IS2000. Next you want to do is place the, the actual brake. You place the brake over the disc, just like that, and for now you are done. Because Avid brakes are a little bit more complicated to install than brakes from Hope. The Hope brakes are the easiest brakes to mount. But with Avid brakes you need a little bit more. You need the screw for fixing the brake socket and the screws are holding several spacers. First spacer is just the spacer and then the second and the third one here in this in this specific case is a spacer which can be adjusted. I don't know the quality of the camera is not high enough but it's, uh, it's not completely straight it's rounded. This is Avid specifically as far as I know. Hope does not need that. But otherwise, the process is the same. Put the screw with the spacers on the other side through the back socket. Place the spacers from downside. And important, the adjustable spacers have to be with the right side to each other and at the side of the brake, directly at the brake. You assemble it that, that way and then put it on the post mount socket adapter. You take the tool you need for this. In this case I need a torque wrench. A torque wrench, but usually it's a common imbus. Tighten it just a little bit. And then you do the other screw the exactly the same way. This is right now a little bit more difficult. Because you have to get this complete spacer package under the bracket. As soon as you have done that, take your tool, tighten everything. 
but not completely, just that the distance between the brake socket and the disc brake is as little as possible. And then you can see the brake is still moving. So you are not done yet. You have assembled it, but now you have to adjust it, otherwise you will have very nasty voices from the disc brake. Adjusting a brake mounted on a post mount system or a post mount adapter is relatively easy. There's a good trick. A little bit more difficult again with the Avid brakes. With the Hope brakes you're done with this trick after 10 seconds. But with the Avid brakes you have to move them a little bit. Shake them a little bit so the spacers, the adjustable spacers, can settle. They should settle until they are more or less straight. This can take some time because you have very little space to move. While you're doing that, you can be sure that the brake is mounted more or less correctly. On the high, push it when necessary. and then pre-tighten the screws. Now, you will need to turn the wheel so the wheel can move. As soon as the wheel moves, you will pull the rear brake slowly until it reaches full contact. Now I can't move the wheel anymore. I'm still tightening the brake a little bit more. Now the brake is completely closed. And now you close or tighten all the screws. Not too much, just a little bit. After you have done that, you can release the brake. Now, theoretically, a whole brake is adjusted. But a brake with those difficult spacer construction takes a little bit more doing. Not much, but a little bit. So. But as you can hear, the brake is adjusted pretty well, though. You can only hear the clicking from the hub and only a very, very little noise. And this noise you can get out completely by adjusting it more and more that way. It's, after all, just a matter of patience. This brake uses a floating disc, which means the disc should be properly straight. So there's no use and no, and no need on working on the disc. But some complete steel disc brakes who are made of one piece, sometimes you have to adjust them with a tool like this. This is a special tool for bending and re-straightening disc brakes. You just place it like that. I will not do this here. And then you will bend into the direction that you have more space to the brake pad on one side and less to the other side. It's very easy if you take a flashlight and shine from the outside and look from upside. And as soon as you can see the light coming equally on both sides, you're done. Of course, you have to bend the disc only where it's necessary and not everywhere. You will find that yourself. A floating disc, I repeat this, must not be treated with a tool like that. Otherwise, you can destabilize the integrity of the whole disc. So if you use a floating disc, forget it. Otherwise, we're done so far. 
the disc is adjusted after all. Right now I have luck. The disc is really adjusted. And then you tighten it on the necessary level. Again, with the torque wrench. But if you don't have a torque wrench, you can do it by hand. I have a lot of practice doing this by hand, so my screws survive it. But everyone who doesn't do this that often, be a little bit careful. So, basically, that's it. This is how you install your disc brake. No matter front or rear, it's always the same.